Hi and welcome to this, our lesson on graphing quadratics in polynomial form. Now, previously, or in a previous video, in fact, we looked at graphing quadratics uh, in turning point form and how really helpful that was. So if we had y equals x minus 2 squared plus 3, for example, we knew that that led to a turning point at the value of 2 and 3. There was my turning point, and by putting x equals 0 into this equation, I ended up with my x-axis intercept, which would have been at 4 plus 3 is 7, and so we can sketch my graph. Now, turning point form is awesome. Love, 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 and the lesson before this one, or the video before this one, showed you how to complete the square. But, Let's just have a quick recap for those people who've been skipping lessons. Why have you been doing this? All right, so we've looked at the idea of factorizing quadratics. Again, I keep explaining this. Factorizing is nothing more than finding where a graph crosses the x-axis. Having it in this intercept form allows me to write a quadratic as a series of linear factors, x plus 3, for example, x minus 2, with some form of dilation possible that then allows me to multiply it out and get it back into my ax squared plus bx plus c form, all right, which is useful, all right? Turning point form is great um, because it gives us so much more information. But factorizing, we can use the T method. We can use completing the square quadratic formula and the cross method. Again, the cross method I tend not to understand, so I'm just going to ignore it to those of you who can do it. Now, when we do this in algebra, we're actually using it to try and sketch a quadratic. And the exams that have coming up basically wish you to do quite a lot of sketching and sketching it in an accurate way that gives as much information as possible. All right? Whether it be a quadratic or a cubic or even a straight line, we need to ensure we always mark on the graph the following things. X-axis intercepts. So I'm going to draw the picture of a cubic, for example, All right, and I know that's not quite where we're at at this moment, but you always have to make sure that you label x-axis intercepts. And that does not mean by putting a plus 2 there, a plus 4 there, and a minus 3 there. That's not labeling it. You actually have to label it as x is minus 3 comma 0. This one here would be 2 comma 0, and this one here would be 4 comma 0. So those are my x-axis intercepts. My y-axis intercept, again, must be labeled as 0 comma 7, for example. Right? It has to have a physical coordinate written beside it. Turning points. Now, in this situation here, anything that when we draw a, ta a tangent to a point and it has a zero gradient, we know is a turning point. And again, in this situation here, I'd have to put some physical coordinate. Likewise here, assuming that that's not at that point. Endpoints. Now, endpoints are a really interesting one because when they give you a function that has a limited domain, you must make sure that you put endpoint circles on it and label them with whatever coordinates they would be. So there would be a set of coordinates there and there would be a set of coordinates on there. Now, endpoints will come to another point. Equations of any asymptotes. What on earth is an asymptote? Well, we've already met them. And if you remember, for graphs like uh, hyperbolas, we know that the line here, x equals 0, is an asymptote. And actually, this line here, y equals 0 is also an asymptote. The graph will continue to get closer and closer and closer to that, but under normal circumstances, will not cross that asymptote. Right? So they're really important to show as well. And generally speaking, just to make sure, we would put one easy-to-know coordinate value. All of that has to go on every single graph. And generally speaking, we would want to put the function as well, whatever the function was. It would be silly to lose marks by not putting this information on. So basically, this is what we're going to be doing in this video. So when you sketch something in mathematical language, you draw a diagram which isn't necessarily perfect. All right? The difference between the sketch, or if you're not drawing a sketch, the chances are you're plotting something. So if you had the equation x squared, for example, then you would be literally sitting there plotting all the points. And then trying to do some beautiful hand sketch. All right, that is a plot. 
A sketch, on the other hand, is nothing more than a reasonably accurate representation that's got information on it to show that you actually have drawn y equals x squared. All right? So that's a rough sketch. I mean, if I tried to do that in an exam, I'd lose marks because I've actually not gone through the origin. But we're not creating a work of art, all right? You are not trying to create that beautiful work of art there. Not that it has anything to do with a quadratic. It is the best work of art I could find. But you are trying to draw a semi-perfect drawing. When you sketch a graph, you always follow the same steps. Number one, find the y-axis intercept. Two, find the x-axis intercept. Three, find the equation of the axis of symmetry for the equation of any turning points. Now, although I've numbered them one, two, three, and four, actually, the order isn't prescriptive. So long as you do all of those four steps, you should be able to then draw or sketch your curve, right? You change the order depending on how the question has been given to you. So in turning point form, you might find the turning point the easiest to find first. But look, let's deal with an example. So we're going to ask to find the x and y axis intercepts and the turning point, and then sketch the graph of this, right? So number one, in this form, it's really easy to see the y-axis intercept. We could use our standard rules and say y equals 0, which would then give y is equal to 0 squared plus 2 lots of 0 uh, minus 8. Nearly put a plus there. And we know that's 0 and that's 0. But with practice, you tend to know that this last value here is the y-axis intercept when it's written in that form. So, number 1, there's my minus 8. Thanks very much. We're now going to complete the square to find the turning point. How do we complete the square? Well, this is the way I do it. Y is equal to, so that will be x plus 1, half the middle value, square it. x plus 1 squared, I would normally get 1 times 1, which is 1. I don't want 1, I want minus 8, so I'm going to take away 9. And there we go. There is my completed the square. Thank you very much. Rather easy. Now, for those of you who like to do it the other way or the harder way, it is still x plus 1 squared. When we square it out, we get plus 1, so I'm going to take away 1, and then I'm going to take away the 8, <laughs> which is exactly the same. I've just skipped a step. All right, so now I've completed the square to find the turning point. This now gives me my turning point is equal to uh, minus 1, comma, minus 9. Remember, it's minus 1 because it's the opposite of what this graph actually tells us. Now the x-axis intercepts. Well, when we have the x-axis intercepts, what do we know? We know that y is equal to 0. We could go back up to this equation here and say, well, OK, then we now know that 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8. And then you're going to say, well, hold on a moment, I've got a quadratic, so I could use the t method and go through all that malarkey. Guys, you don't need to. You've actually got a nice, easy form here to help you find the x-axis intercepts. Remember, we know that y equals 0. So not only is this y here equal to 0, but then so is that y there for the completed the square form. So I now know that I can say, well, x plus 1 squared minus 9 must also equal 0. So x plus 1 squared is equal to 9. Add 9 to both sides. I'm going to square root both sides, which gives me x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. And remember, we have to have this plus or minus. So we now know my two values are going to be given by minus 1, plus or minus 3. So it gives me x1, or my first value of x is minus 1, plus 3. And my second value of x is minus 1, minus 3. So x1 is equal to 2, or x2 is equal to minus 4. So, have I got all the information I need to know now? I've got my crossing point at 2 minus 4, I've got my turning point, and I've got my y-axis intercept. So, let's scroll this out so that we can see everything, and hopefully we end up with... Right, x1 is at 2, there we go, there's 2, x2 is at minus 4, there's minus 4. I've got my turning point at minus 1, what did I say, minus 9, so there we go, minus 1, minus 9. And I've got my intercept at, what value did we say, minus 8? Now, obviously, in this, I've used a computer sketching program. I should have written, if this was my hand sketch, I would have written that as 2, 0. I would have written that as minus 4, 0. That point there would be written as uh, 0, minus 9. This point here would be written as 0, minus 8. And this point here would be written as minus 1, minus 9. And there, I think, if I had hand sketched that, I'd have been pretty happy. Now, 
Maths is the big fat trick, and we can use this information to do stuff in reverse. You'll be able to apply the understanding both ways. Remember, doing it one way is just practicing skills, nothing more. Being able to do it backwards, I think, is showing your understanding. And by showing your understanding, that's what methods is looking for. So, you're now told a parabola has x-axis intercepts and three at nine. State the x-coordinate of the vertex. Well, firstly, what is a vertex? Right, vertex is a corner, is a turning point, is the minimum, maximum. So, I now know that it's got an x-axis intercept at three and nine. I want to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. Well, that's the center point. How do I find the center point? You take these two values, you add them together, and you halve it, which gives me six. And because it just wants the x-coordinate, you would have written your answer as x equals six. Now, the great thing is you can't actually find the y-coordinate. Why? Well, they haven't given you any information. They haven't given you that y equals anything. Yes, I could write this as x minus three, x minus nine, for example, is equal to zero, but I don't know whether my um, parabola has been given any form of dilation. So I've actually only got sort of half the information that's useful. A parabola has a vertex at two comma minus ten on one of the x axis x axis oh and one of the x axis intercepts is at nine. Find the other x axis intercept, right? Well so the point of it is here. What we're saying is we've got one axis intercept at nine. You're at vertex at two minus ten. Well I'm not interested in the minus ten, I'm actually only interested in the value of two. And if you remember, our parabola has got to be symmetrical. So the distance between there and there has to be the distance between there and there. Well, if it's seven that way, then I'm gonna take seven away from two, which gives me negative five. And there we go, my x-axis intercept on the other one is equal to negative five. Simple, really, using this basic idea of axis of symmetry. But there we go, that's this lesson done and dusted, graphing quadratics in polynomial form. Hopefully you've enjoyed and understood it. I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi, and thanks very much for watching this, another video by me, The Maths Guru. If you would like to see more videos, why not subscribe and get regular updates? Otherwise, hey, click on the left and watch our next video. Okay, thanks very much. Have a good day.